Thank you very much for inviting me. Yeah. Blessed and excited. Tama. Okay, we're going to do another exercise. Ito naman. You put down and write down, what will you do with your retirement pay? I understand that uh, the attendees here, and this is why this is a pre-retirement seminar, many of the attendees here are going to retire soon. How soon? Uh, I don't know. In a month or two, tama ba? Uh, Sito or, or Niels, how soon will the, or you can share, how long, when will you be retiring? Nakaplano na ba kayo? Do you know how much you're going to get? Okay. Imagine again. Kinakabahan na. Ah, hindi pa alam. Okay. So, imagine again with me, okay? Your boss calls you into his office. It can be the boss, it can be the HR, and he or she says that you, that they will not release your retirement pay unless you submit a plan on how you will spend it. Baka, ma baka magandang uh, policy siguro yan, no? Hindi lang imaginary. But again, there are no right or wrong answers. So if you want to receive that retirement pay that you've been waiting for so many years, you need to submit your plan or budget in two minutes. Okay? It has to be a little more detailed. So in two minutes, I'm going to give you two minutes, write down a detailed plan on what you plan to do. It cannot just be, I will save and invest. You have to break it down, uh, write the steps, okay? And I will give you Two minutes, starting now. Okay. So write down the anticipated amount that you will get and write down the plan. Okay, time is up. Okay, mayroon mga ilan-ilan ang nag-chat already. Excited na sila to share their plans. Okay, estimated, sabi ni Jin uh, uh, Zamora, estimated amount to receive is 1 million. Half of it will be shared with my family members and other relatives and the remaining half will be left for myself. Pwede ba magpa-adapt sa'yo, ma'am? <laughs> Para kasama ako doon. Si Hill, meron siyang business plan to set up delivery service of 50 motorcycles. Initially, like Lala Move. Okay. He has a plan. Meron na siyang iniisip to get into business. Yes. So how are you planning to spend your retirement pay? Thank you, June, Hill, Virginita for sharing. In, uh, Jane also. Okay. Naisip yun na ba? What you're going to do? At matanong ko kayo, how different were your answers or plan to your retirement pay compared to the 30 million inheritance at bakit nag-iba? Si June says, 
60% investing in farmland, 40% for agro trade business. Yan. All right. O, tama si Alberto. Sabi yan, before investing into something, it must be thoroughly studied. Two minutes are not enough. Okay. Well, definitely two minutes is not enough. But maybe you have already thought about it, Sir Alberto, so that you have that two minutes to write it down. And I'm sure if that was the requirement of the HR, before releasing the check, you would come up with something in two minutes, right? But I wanted you to all to come uh, go through these exercises to start thinking about what you're going to do because it starts already with our thoughts, right? And misa nga, iniisip mo pa lang. Uh, your retirement pay is just like your 30th month. Iniisip mo pa lang. No, ubus na sa isipan mo. No? Na ibibigay mo kinanay o tatay, sa pamilya, pambayad ng utang, bibili ka ng bagong cellphone, o maybe sa, kahit sa sakyan, sapatos, sa mga inaanak. Lalo na, pag alam nila, naku, marami na lapit sa'yo. Right? They say that money is relative. Yes, when you, once you get money, all the relatives start coming. But I'd like to share with you, and uh, this is a form of a caveat, okay? that studies show, for example, in the States, in the U.S., once people get their inheritance or a lump sum, like an inheritance or retirement pay, or, or even when they win in the lotto, no ubus kagad because there are eight foolish things or dumb things that people do once they inherit money. Okay, One thing, if your uh, retirement pay is not net of taxes, you delay on paying your taxes. What other people do, kung may uta sa bahay, they pay off the, the entire mortgage right away on their house. Or they try to make more money quickly. Tama si Sir Alberto, na kailangan pag-aralan muna no? before getting into business. Or they invest in a new business right away without knowing much about it. You spent your entire work life in one organization and then bilang magbibusiness ka, kaagad-agad, that is a recipe or formula uh, for failure. Okay. Number five, they fail to set a beneficiary. Usually when you're retirement age, di ba? kailangan meron ka ng will, meron ka ng uh, kung kaninang iiwanan, yung pera na yan para hindi mag-away-away ang mga kamag-anak o mga pamilya. Or another thing is you get a timeshare. Before the pandemic, maraming uso, uh, uso yung uh, timeshare uh, investments where you invest a certain amount and you get uh, a timeshare in a hotel or a resort. Okay? And then usually you don't end up, you will only end up using it once a month. It's a bad investment. Okay. Or number seven, you go on a spending spree. You're so excited to receive that lump sum and you want to treat yourself. You feel entitled. So you go on a spending spree. And before you know it, you spend too much and you start to regret it. And number eight, according to the survey, the mistake that people make is they start talking about the money you inherited, okay, or you received. I'm sure it's only a case of security, being in Nika, so you need to be uh, keep it confidential. Don't announce on Facebook that you're retiring and uh, don't announce that you're getting this much money, okay. But in the Philippines, you know, when people win the lotto, 90% of the people who win the lotto, just like getting inheritance, easy come, easy go. There is a, um, a lotto winner who won 80 million pesos, but three years later, naputunan siya ng kuryente. Easy come, easy go. The caveat here is, if you do not budget and plan, hindi kayo sanay right now before you retire, and then biglang nakuran kayo ng malaking pera, chances are, without a plan, you will fail you will lose that money. So in the remaining time that I have, the next 45 or 15 minutes, I want to present to you seven wise and diligent things to do with your retirement check or even your pension, okay? Because I believe in what uh, the Bible says that King Solomon said, lazy hands make a man poor, okay? Minsan nakakataman magplano, nakakataman magstrategize, you just, you know, want to go with the flow, but the Bible promises, diligent hands bring wealth. Okay. Diligent hands bring wealth. So we are going to, I'm going to propose to you how to be diligent and wise with that.
that money. Okay, so there are seven wise things and diligent things to do with your retirement pay and even your pension. Okay, number one, okay, pretend that you don't even have that retirement pay. Once you get that retirement pay, I submit to you, do not retire. You can retire from Nika, but don't retire. Keep on working. Go look for something uh, that you've always dreamed of, maybe working in, be it a teacher, be it uh, uh, in university, be it in, an, uh, in a business, okay, working for your family. Pretend that you don't have it and save all of that for a contingency fund. Okay, we'll talk about that a little later. I'll give you a just overview. I'm glad that many of you said that you will give, you will be generous. And I'll show you why it is a good investment to be generous, give or tie to church or charity. Number three, diligent thing or wise thing is to reduce and even erase debt, especially if the interest is high. Sana wala naman dyan nag pumasok sa 5-6 o nang hiram sa mga loan sharks. But if you have, you have to pay that right away. Number four, at the end of the seminar, we're going to talk about investing. And I've invited uh, two of my good friends, Marvin and Jess, to help us through this uh, investment landscape, stocks, real estate, etc. Number five, wise thing to do is to start a small business or sideline. Number six, of course, how will you enjoy your retirement if you don't invest in your health? So you need to spend some money on your mental and your physical health. And I'm glad that you're gonna have a seminar on that, uh, I think tomorrow or in the next coming days. And number seven, keep on improving and growing yourself. Spend on continuing education like what you're doing now. Mabuti nga, libre ito sa inyo. But go ahead and spend, invest in books, invest in seminars beyond what uh, HR or your company is offering to you. All right. And uh, just a footnote, ano ba yung contingency fund? Ito yung emergency fund. Na that, uh, kunyari, uh, something happens to you or uh, if you're still working, you're not yet retired, you have at least 6 to 12 months of, of uh, savings that will cover 6 to 12 months of overhead for you. Okay. Okay. So ito po yung reseta natin para sa pera bitinitis. Okay. Well, let's look. Once you receive your retirement pay, budget to save at least 10% or even 100% of that in savings. You know, as I say, ipon pa more. Save aggressively, save up to 100% of the whole amount. That's the tax, that's the tithe or giving to a special savings account. Some of you mentioned that. You are very blessed that you have access to special savings accounts that give high interest. Then set it aside and pretend that you had never received a retirement pay. Kalimutan nyo na. Because I assume that many of you before this were wise enough to employ the 2020 retirement plan strategy. I don't know if you're aware of that. I talk about that in my book, Pera Na Hindi Bitin, which is available online sa omflit.com or you can go on Shopee or Lazada and it's there available or my website, rdroberto.com, you can buy that. But I talk about the 2020 strategy. Okay, 20 years from now, you should start saving 20% of your income. Whatever comes in, you get 100,000 a month, save 20,000 of that. You get 10,000 a month, save 2,000 of that. And what is the result? Look, if 20 years ago, you had started saving 1,000 a month, by now you would have had 467,000 in savings. You know? The assumption here is 6% per annum. It's not a, it's not a checking account. Huh? but uh, it's in a, an instrument that will give you at least 6%. And if you had doubled that and saved at least 2,000 a month for 20 years, wow, look at that, 935,000. Yeah. How many of you are thinking now, sana nag-save ako 20, 20 years ago? Put in the chat box. <laughs> All right. And if you have saved 4,000 a month for the last 20 years, wow, look at that, 1.8 million. Parang retirement pay, no? Parang dumabli yung retirement pay mo. And if 10,000 a month, look at that, 4.6 million if you have saved 10,000 a month for the past 20 years, okay? 
you can, this is exercise is easy to do. You can go on the internet and look for a retirement calculator. And uh, this is from Trudy Rich Club of Bo Sanchez. He has a retirement calculator. And if, for example, you have 20,000 in that starting fund and you add 20,000 a month for the next 20 years, a 6%, 9.4 million. Dagdagan mo lang ng 500 pesos yun every month oh, for the next 20 years, that 9.4 will become 12 million. Hmm. So if you had done that today, 20 years ago, today, saving 20,000 pesos a month, you would have had 12 million. Let's round it off. At 10% uh, return or interest out, you would have 1.2 million per annum or divided by 12, you would have had another pandagdag sa pension mo ng 100,000 pesos a month. Okay. Well, the question is where to invest. Samba pwede natin invest in retirement pay or the savings that you have had in preparation. There's corporate bonds. I have uh, a banker, my personal banker, always texts me offers for, for corporate bonds. And you can do that. You can ask your bank, oh, paki-text naman ako, paki-email uh, or text me whenever there's a, an offering for corporate bonds. And so I get these updates regularly, pre-pandemic, no? Although meron pa rin mo nang offer from uh, blue chip Ayala land stocks, uh, corporations offering up to 7 to 7%. Okay. Meron pa ng Petro, no? 7.69. That's gross. So ask your banker, ask your bank, the bank manager to update you. Okay. Or if you were wise enough to save, meron ka ng 10 or 20 million by now, you can buy an apartment or condo and rent it out. Now, pre-pandemic, we were renting out uh, one of our condos in Airbnb, and we were getting an average of 4,000 pesos a night as a uh, rental, an average of 27 nights. This is in BGC. So that's an additional 113,000, okay? Or that's like your pension a month. Okay. Yun yung strategy na tinuro ng father and love ko kay, uh, sa asawa ko, kay Miriam. Uh, <coughs> See, the Adi Med, my Lolo Med, was living, is now living off rental income from apartments that they bought while preparing for retirement. So it's a very low risk, a relatively low risk kind of investment. You can look at foreclosed properties, buy it cheap, and fix it up and start to rent it out. Or, mas simple, if you have access, you know, special savings, kagaya ng, uh, may mention kanina sa PS, uh, uh, PSS, is this the same thing? PSS, uh, LAI. Uh, I don't know if it's the same thing or AppSly. But I know now na meron na uh, my cap no na 1 million lang ang pwede and at 13% before it used to be 17 or 18%. Okay, So if you have access to that, well and good. You can also look at uh, lending out your money to small businesses at an interest rate of 12%. There are companies and uh, that are looking at that. Uh, Western Union is one company that I know that does that. Uh, you can look at stocks that pay out dividend earnings. But all in all, don't be tempted to invest in high-risk ventures. So the person who said, oh, mag-invest ka agad ako, bibili ako ng marami motor at mag-negosyo ko, that's good. But be sure you partner with someone who has experience in doing that because it can still be high-risk. All right. Later, we'll have uh, Marvin. I know he's entered the room and he's lurking. But we're going to ask him to talk more, maybe more about how to retire on dividends earnings. So we're talking about the stock market. If you're not familiar with the stock market, it's simply investing in the stock market. It's not gambling as pe some people think, but it's really just investing your money if you buy those stocks in established companies. So it's just like you're being a part owner of Meralco, Globe, PLDT, Jollibee, BDO or this company called SPC Power Corporation. Why do I mention these companies? Most of these companies pay dividends. Okay, So if you haven't set up an account, uh, you can set up an account through your bank, Metro Bank, BPI, Call Financial. You can do that online. Okay, Unahan ko na si Marvin. And I, Marvin Germa has a wonderful YouTube channel. 
I suggest that you subscribe to him. But yun, nalaman ko yung mga stocks that give good dividends. Okay? There are some people who do not buy stocks if they don't give dividends. And these are the stocks that give dividends. SPC, GMA7, Maralco, PLDT, Globe, etc. Okay? And Marvin shared in one of his videos that if you want to earn 100,000 a month, Okay, in dividends in the stock market using these stocks that he chose, you would need to put at least 24 million. American 24 million, you can get 100,000 a month average. Okay, not guaranteed, but on the average, this is the historical uh, measure of the dividends. Okay, so ito yung mga, uh, you can, you can, if you go to his YouTube channel, he explains. Okay, na excited na ako dito. Eh. Or you can just go to one company, SPC, pays out about an average of 10% per annum on dividends, okay? And makaka-earn ka ng mga 100,000 a month on 10 million investment. Okay. Tatunan natin mamaya kay Marvin kung risky ba yan, is it advisable to do that? So the question is, hmm, paano makakasave? Kung hindi mo ginawa dati o kung ginagawa mo dati, just keep on doing what you're doing. Or right now, I suggest that you be aggressive. Once you get your pension, protect your pension. Um, if you're familiar with uh, basketball, the coaches say in defense, kailangan natin mag-box out. We have to protect our money by boxing out ourselves, uh, the money from things and uh, temptations that will eat up our funds. For example, nako, kala mo, online na tayo ngayon. Uh, hindi na tayo pupunta ng mall, pero nako, meron pa rin online. Di ba? Online sale, 10, 10, 11, 11, 12, 12, etc., etc. What do you think when you see the sale sign? I hope that you don't go online and keep on buying. Do you think shopping tayo or do you think Stay away. Look elsewhere. Get go away from those sites. There's nothing wrong with being practical. Don't be proud. You know, save aggressively. Don't always order online the most expensive foods. Pwede naman tayo magdilata, magchenchuri tuna, paminsan minsan. Okay. And if you're tempted to pay for something, invest in something, or buy a big item like a car. Pray before you pay. Okay. I remember uh, I had a, a bonus. I think it was the 13th month and I was tempted to buy a car. I wanted to buy a new car because I was luma na yung revo ko. So I told my friends that I was going to buy a car. But, and, uh, but I remember what I teach in my seminars. I always teach to pray before you pay. So I prayed and I said, Lord, I want to buy this car that I'm looking at. It was a Nissan SUV. It cost 1.2 million at that time. I had the money. So I said, can I buy it? That's why we need to pray because if we are just stewards of the money that has been entrusted to us. So we need to ask permission by praying to the owner of the money. It is the Lord who owns everything. So we need to pray. Paala muna sa Lord. Okay, Lord. Lord, pwede ko bang binin tong kotse na to? And you know what? I prayed. And at that moment, to literally at that moment, my friend texted me, Oy, RD, naalala ko na gusto mong bumili ng kotse. I saw online, uh, OLX pa nun eh, na may nagbebenta ng second-hand car, pero it was only like 800 kilometers pa lang ang, ang natatakbo niya, second-hand. Binibenta na niya because he had won it in a raffle. It was in mint condition. It was this car. It was a Mitsubishi Fusion. Instead of 1 million, the SRP, he was selling it at 650,000. Takatipid ako ng more than 350,000 pesos just because I prayed before I paid. And that's what I want to encourage you to do. Praying before you pay is being matipid. Sabi ng uh, authors ng The Millionaire Next Door, being frugal is the cornerstone of wealth building. Now, I don't want to deny you of your simple pleasures. Maka mayroon sa inyo, may mga luho, na Jollibee, McDo, Starbucks when you go out. Maybe you go and have your, your uh, luho three times a week, four times a week. But you know what? If you simply reduce 
your Starbucks, your McDo, your eating out once a week. Reduce it by once a week. Ordering out, delivering. You know, I averaged it at 187 at, uh, pesos and 50 centavo is the cost. Reduce by once lang, once a week. You will save 750 pesos a month. Konti naman, Sir RD. Hindi, pero pag kinumpute mo yon, in a year, that's 9,000 pesos of cutting out one coffee a week. In three years, it's 27,000. In 12 years, it's 108,000. In 20 years, it's 400,000 pesos. And in 30 years, it's 1 million pesos just by cutting out one coffee and dessert a week. Ituro po natin to sa mga anak natin. Maybe it's too late for us. Maybe not. Three years, 12 years, we can still do that. Protect your pension. Protect what you're going to get. Especially those who are smoking. Okay. I don't want to pick on you, but look at what this Bisho is doing. Not just to your health, but to your financial health as well. Dati 60 pesos lang. Alam ko ngayon, it's 100 pesos na per pakete. No? Pero kung meron pa kayo makuwang mura na 60 pesos, tinan mo, sa isang linggo, 420 pesos. Sa isang buwan, 1,680. And in one year, you're spending 20,000 pesos on cigarettes alone. The, multiply that by 10 years, that's 200,000. Multiply that by 20 years, that's 400,000 pesos on cigarettes. <sighs> Hingang malalim. <laughs> Let's move on. Seven wise things to do with your retirement pay. Okay, basta. Matubato sa langit, tamaan wag magalit, ha? Again, save for a contingency fund. As I said, keep on working. Don't retire. Retire from Nika, but don't retire from life. Don't retire from your passion. Don't retire from the workforce. In the Bible, there's no retirement, actually. Pretend that you don't have that money and save it. Number two that I want to talk about is to give back and honor God. Erase debt. Invest. Start a small business. Spend on your health and spend on continuing education. Let's move on to number two, giving. Okay. I come from a Christian uh, perspective or uh, siyempre Fosig ang nag sa atin, no? So Christian perspective tayo. And I believe that the best investment that you can make is to give. Whatever God moves you or impresses upon you to give, give. This is the best investment. Jesus said, give and it will be given to you. A good measure pressed down, shaken together and running over will be poured into your lap for with the measure you use, it will be measured to you. Sa Tagalog nga, mas maganda pa eh, di ba? Magbigay kayo at kayo bibigyan hustong takal. Siksik, liglig at umaapaw. Sino sa'yo ang gustong umaapaw ang ibibigay sa inyo? Then, pray about your giving. In my life, I have tested the Lord so many times that whenever I would give, it keeps on coming back to me. Siksik, niglig, at umaapaw. In fact, John Templeton, one of the richest men in the world, he said, the best investment with the least risk and the greatest dividend is giving. Why? Because Paul said to the Corinthians, remember this, whoever sows sparingly will also reap sparingly, and whoever sows generously will also reap generously. Make giving part of your retirement plan, make it part of your pension, make it part of your salary budget right now. Teach it to your children as well. As John Wesley said, this is the purpose of money. You know, Make all the money you can. Save all the money you can so that you can give all you can. Do I hear an amen there in the chat box? So again, as a number two na tayo. we finish number two, we'll go to number three on how to erase and reduce debt and we'll cover all the rest, okay? So why strategy number three is to budget to get out of debt. Utang no more. A lot of finance really is mindset. You know, the financial experts say that actually personal finance is only 20% skills and strategy and know-how, but 80% behavior and mindset. 80% behavior and mindset. Okay. 
And many times because of our behavior and habits and mindset, we get into trouble, we get into debt. That our thinking is just like this. Para chang ipis. I mean, behavior na yon that brings us into debt. Yon, impulse buying, indulgence, pa impress, poor planning, wala tayong budget, ignorance of financial principles, at yun, shopping ng shopping. If we are not content right now, we will get into debt. So we need to stop that by living simply and being content. Kung meron ka namang computer na gumagana, na hindi naman Apple, gusto mo Apple, yan, lagyan mo naman sanas yung laptop mo. Apple na rin siya. Diba? Paul says to the Hebrews, keep your lives free from the love of money and be content with what you have because God has said, never will I leave you and never will I forsake you. Paul said to Timothy that the greatest wealth is this. Godliness and contentment is great wealth. So if we can be content, learn to be content with what God has given us already, you are financially free. So again, we discovered how to save. We covered strategy of giving. We covered, in a nutshell, how to reduce or erase debt, you know. And number four, we'll go to investment. So, number four, invest pa more. You know, get that retirement money that you're having right now that you plan to get and look at the options. Okay. But of course, before you invest, investigate. Lalo na kung meron mga dumating sa'yo na go-offer ng double your money. Bro, kahit Kristiyano pa yan, mag-invite sa'yo. At sabihin niya, give me your one million and I will double your money because wag kayo maniwala. Because the lesson is this, if it's too good to be true, it probably is. Wag yung pasasakit yun ng ulo, sinino yung Aquino, sa gagawin niyo yan. Many times we are motivated by fear of losing out and by greed. But if you're greedy, look at this. Paul said to Timothy, people who want to get rich fall into temptation and a trap and into many foolish and harmful desires that plunge men into ruin and destruction. For the love of money, it is not money itself, but the love of money is a root of all kinds of evil. And some people eager for money have wandered from the faith and pierced themselves with many griefs. And I've met many people and I have to admit and confess to you that I myself have been tempted to invest in many of these <sighs> traps. You know, many years ago, there was this uh, pyramid scheme you know, that was out there. And dami dami, kahit ang dami kristyano nang invest dito. Pero yung pala, pyramid scheme siya. It, they said that you were investing in uh, telecoms. This was multi-tel, okay? Long, long time ago. But it turned out to be a scam. So just look, let's look at the solid options. Maybe let's start with property, Philippine property. They say that passive income, income equals financial income or financial freedom. And I like to reiterate again, the option of investing in an apartment, a small condo, even a house. Um, my friends say, and my wife who's also a realtor says that there's a rule of 10 in real estate investment, only buy a property if it will give you rental income that is equivalent to 10% per annum ROI, all right? So if the property that you're buying, for example, is worth 10 million, it should be giving you 1 million per annum in rental income. Simply, right? Diba? If you were able to save 12 million, you can buy a property that will uh, look at the market that will give you a 10% return or a rental income of 100,000 a month. <coughs> So, uh, yeah, Sito said, you may, as early as now, you may post questions and let's not wait until the end. If you have a question right now, before it goes away, you can keep on posting it in the chat box and we'll go over that. Meron naman save. Where can we find uh, properties? Wag muna retail. Look at foreclosed properties. Right? There are websites, Philippine uh, foreclosures that you can <coughs> that you can, uh, excuse me, that you can subscribe to. I subscribe to 
this service, it sends me an email every, every month about the foreclosed properties that are going into auction. Okay. And so check that out. Check out foreclosed properties. You can go to your bank and ask for the list of foreclosed properties. The bank will give you a printout of that as well. Okay. And usually it's just at 10% or 20% of auction price. Okay. So you can finance 90% of it because the banks want to get rid of that uh, asset. All right. Uh, but don't buy auction property or foreclosed property that is still occupied kasi sakit ng ulo yan. Okay? So that's what my wife did. She, she bought foreclosed properties, uh, meron mga rent uh, to own and for sale that, she, that, uh, that provided her for income while she was still single. Okay? So we covered savings. Number two, giving, erasing debt. Uh, we'll go into investing a little more at the end of this session. We will have at least an hour or uh, 45 minutes at least to discuss investing with my two friends, Marvin and Jess. And the fifth thing I wanna discuss with you is what many of you have mentioned or maybe written down and you haven't shared it, but many of you are mentioning about starting a small business, okay? So we're gonna talk about that a little. But King Solomon said, I like this, that all hard work brings a profit, but mere talk leads only to poverty. Yes. Uh, starting a business is hard work. Uh, harder even than maybe a job, okay? But it does pay a lot of good returns. Um, an example of this, uh, I got myself into investing into uh, small franchises like this couple. Etong couple na to, uh, retired early because they were able to save money and they bought, uh, they invested in 18 potato corner franchises, Okay. A typical franchise cost is like this. It's a 350000 franchise fee plus 150000 down payment uh, or security deposit. You need about 50000 for operational funds. So one small food kiosk will cost you about 550000 Okay. And what are the returns? Yeah, net income per kiosk is about 30000 to 50000 per kiosk. That's a big 65% return. No, in 18 months, your investment of 550,000 will be back. So, para dumabi na siya. And look, if you have this couple, they have 16 outlets. They earn an average of 30,000 pesos a month per kiosk. So, they are earning at least almost half a million a month. Right? Very good. But there are still risks. I myself got into the franchise business. I invested in a master franchise of a Cebu brand uh, chain called Tubu Cane Juice. Nakita namin siya sa Cebu. My wife and I invested in it. We set up kiosks in the malls, in Ayala, uh, Alabang Town Center, Glorieta, Festival Mall, etc. And it was very good in the beginning. And then with what we earned, we reinvested and started uh, new brands, uh, franchises like GoToGo. -Go. I partnered with the owners of Potato Corner. Let's start kami na itong mga bagong brand na to. At ganoon din ang investment niya, oh, mga 550,000. I set up about 19 stores, all in all. Okay. And the net income was about 35 to 50,000 per store. Parang sa Potato Corner din. Of course, you need to make a pro forma, uh, PNL, like uh, what I did, to see if the business is viable. Okay, uh, this is a template that you can get anywhere. I, this is my template, but you can get that on the internet. And I know that after this uh, course or seminar is over, you will get a PDF file of this, so you don't have to keep on, you know, printing screen on this. Okay, so like diversify ako. We had so many stores. We also invested in Henlin franchise. Fior Gelato, uh, <clears throat> expand the portfolio namin. We invested also in a technology company called Flipside. Matagal na ako dun sa Inspire with Francis Kong as a partner. I set up uh, a learning hub, Homeschool Global Learning Hub. Set up din kami na Mr. Moo. And a milk tea franchise. Guess when we set up our last two franchises? March 1, 2020. And you all know what happened two weeks later. Right? And when the pandemic hit, yun, many of our stores were closed due to coronavirus. Uh, I had to say goodbye 
to many of those stores. Out of the 19, ano nyo, uh, I only maintained one or two stores. You know? So wipe out about 12 million. But I am still joyful. I can still laugh. I can still uh, be joyful because I believe what the Bible says, to consider it pure joy whenever you face trials of many kinds because you know that the testing of your faith produces perseverance. Okay? And that perseverance uh, be complete because you will, after that, you'll be complete and mature and lacking in nothing. That is what the Bible promises. So I'm sharing this with you to show also my mistakes. You know, I put too much money in one kind of investment. But basically, COVID-19 has given me, you know, those 19 stores that have uh, closed, it has given me 19 opportunities to grow in character and contentment. You know, I'm back to zero in that sphere. Buti na, meron kami mga investments in real estate. And, and others. No? But during this pandemic, we were so blessed that uh, we found another kind of franchise. Okay? Meron na, uh, many of the companies have pivoted. And one of them is uh, JC International, the owner of Show My King. Instead of offline franchise or some malls, meron ng online franchise or online food business. If you want to set up, and dami nag set up ng mga home-based fran- uh, businesses, di ba? So they offered a solution to that. Okay? And uh, last year in August, it was my wife, Miriam, who got into it. Okay? And she started uh, with 18, uh, 16, 15,888, one, one online franchise. Doon sa Show My King, you can get multiple brands, about six or seven brands, okay? And they promise you a income, average income of 30 to 60,000 pesos a month if you work the plan, okay? So <clears throat> I'll show you the returns. Huh? Uh, anyway, tax paid na to. Uh, nothing to hide. <clears throat> 15,888 is your franchise fee dito sa Show My King franchise. Okay, I'm using this as an example. There's no kiosk to invest in. No deposits sa mall kasi everything is online. No operational fund. The company will keep the stocks for you and whenever someone orders from your online franchise or your link, you make money. So that is your money out, uh, your capital, 15888 Miriam bought three sites, okay, uh, one for herself, one for me, one for her dad. So her investment of 47000 last August, okay. She bought a couple more, but today, as of today, after August, August, September, October, November, December, after five months of working that business, it is now averaging her 62000 pesos of income per week, okay. And now, like expand pa sila. So someone mentioned about setting up a delivery service na parang lala move. Show My King also set up their own called Tok Tok. And the franchise is only 16,000. Kasama na yung Show My King. They will set up riders for you and all you have to do is share the link where people can book this delivery yeah. service for you. Okay? I don't have time to, man, uh, to explain to you all the details of that, pero... If you want to attend a uh, online seminar, meron bukas. This Friday. This Friday, January 15, it will be hosted by my wife, Miriam. So you can see here, take a screenshot of this <coughs> to get the Zoom link and register online. <coughs> okay? So maganda negosyo din yan. So kami, we have moved from mall-based franchises to online based franchises <clears throat> and we are also studying now e-commerce moving forward everything has moved most of the commerce has moved online as you know okay what are the most uh, followed online platforms lazada so i'll make lazada as an example you know, uh, very simple uh, to set up your own lazada store even if you're a teenager, you can set up your Lazada store. There are many examples. Ito, 19 years old lang siya. Oh. Nag-set up na siya ng kanyang Lazada store. Free registration. And I'll give you an example of someone who started with just 5,000 pesos while he was still an employee. All right? I'm going to show a video. So if you don't mind, uh, pakimute lang ang iyong mga mics. I still hear somebody, uh, some people... Uh, some feedback in terms of uh, your mic. So let's watch this video 
I mean, I'm not paid by Lazada to do this, but I'm sharing this for you so that you can be inspired. Ako si Joseph Aquino. May hari ng JJ General Merchandise. Hold on, hold on. Did you, see, did you hear the audio? Tito, did you hear the audio? Yes, okay. May audio, may audio. Ako si Joseph Aquino. May hari ng JJ General Merchandise at isang Lazada seller. Labing dalawa kami magkakapatid. After the early age, four years old, natuto na akong mamili ng isda sa Malabon at saka sa Nabotas. Alas 9 ng gabi, na kami sa Fishport para kinakumagahan, mahigitinda yung pera ko sa palit. So after that, after makatulog ng konti, pasok naman ako sa school. When I graduated, I started from sales agent to become national sales manager. I'm preparing for my callback on for my retirement. My greatest dream is makapagtayo ako ng sarili kong negosyo na very established. So that is my main goal. Nag-try ako ng business many times. I tried manpower agency, restaurants, yung mga franchise ng food cart. Nagtayo din ako ng mga tindahan for general merchandise. But lahat sila may tendency talagang maluti. Sabi nga nila, there is no time for quitting until you become successful. At ang lahat ay may tamang oras. At dumating na nga yung tamang oras. Noong March 2018, pop up sa app na nag-i-invite si Lazada na you can join us as a seller kahit wala kang requirements. So I tried. Na-approve ako. That was the start of my successful business career at Lazada. I started with 5,000 and pumili lang ako ng paunti-unti ng produkto. Based on the research, ang lahat ng tao mahilig kumain, mahilig sa sweets. Noong una, o bago ako pumasok ng opisina, lahat nakaprepare na yung mga for drop off ko ng mga order for that day. Tapos sa gabi, pag uwi ko, I need to answer mga customer inquiry. We cater health and beauty products, especially mga rejuvenating sets, mga slimming agent, may mga whitening agent, lotions. We have also grocery line. So, nandito yung mga snacks, especially yung mga brownies, chichirya, biscuits, cookies, and pastillas, yema, and some assortment of gummy and jelly candies. Hindi ko in-expect na ganito kabilis ang paglaki ko sa Lazada. On the 12-12 campaign, that was my first 1 million peso sales ever in my life. So, dahil nasa bahay lang kami, hindi makagalaw ang mga tao ko, punong-puno. So I sold around 20,000 pieces on that day. Doon nag-umpisa yung talagang nakilala yung aking store sa Lazada. Right now, nag-average ako ng mga 150 packages in a day. Actually, Lazada is sideline ko lang. Kasi I have a full-time job. I have my employee. So they are managing my day-to-day -day on Lazada. Then after office hours, I'm just checking na lang and approving everything. My goal also is to have a corporate social responsibility. On this sideline, I purchase lot. Ang isang malaking plano ko dyan, kasi I need to build livelihood program. We are exploring homemade chili paste and some local salad dressing to help the people to earn and to build their own product na para kumita rin yung community. Successful ako kasi nakakapag-create ako ng trabaho, nakakatulong ako, especially yung mga remote community. Ang pagkakin ng business ko ay hindi ko nararamdaman sa nakukuha ko, kundi dun sa naibibigay ko. All right. Thank you. Thank you, Joseph. How many of you so far are learning? You're inspired? Can you put in the chat box naman how you feel? Are you learning? Are you inspired? Put in the chat box. Let me know how you are right now. Okay. Now, sana na-inspire kayo doon. You know? So, kahit mahirap kayo magnegosyo, you know, offline, online, may pag-asa pa. Okay. In fact, my son Joshua uh, started a fruit business, uh, promoting it through Viber, uh, through the community. Uh, he started this even before the pandemic. Huh? 
He also set up his own Lazada store. I helped him set up his own Lazada store as well. Tapos uh, lumang ko yung kanyang fruit business. Natuto siya mag-pack on his own, mag, uh, mag-timbang ng frutas, at mag-deliver sa village. At pagbalik sa bahay, nag-accounting kami. Sa mga dad, ang hirap pala mag-negosyo. No? Pero at least he's learning how to do that. Right? And he knows how to do a PNL statement. Uh, when we moved house here in Cavite, pinat- we found a supplier of mangoes and pomelos. So, uh, yun. Pagka, hindi na siya humihi ng alawan sa akin. He earns his own keep. Okay? And he right now, he's uh, saved more than 15,000 pesos. Na invest naman niya sa stock market now. Okay? So, you know, maaari sabihin, hindi naman ako entrepreneur. But you know what? The Bible says that, you know, in verse 18 of Deuteronomy 8, uh, verse 18 says, Remember the Lord your God, for it is He who gives you the ability to produce wealth. Okay? Galing po yun sa Panginoon. And He has given us all that ability to produce wealth. All right. Thank you. So, na-cover na natin yung how to save, uh, we covered giving, erasing debt, investing, starting a small business or sideline. And uh, dalawa na lang. Tapos Q&A na tayo. Of course, as I mentioned, spend a little bit of that money to invest in money for your own fitness. You know, Running is the cheapest for me. You don't need equipment. Sapatos na ang kailangan mo. Iba nga, hindi na nagsasapatos eh. Tumatagbo na walang sapatos. Nakayapak lang. No? But the point is to invest in your health. And I won't spend a lot of time here because uh, I, I know that uh, you mentioned earlier that FOSIG will be offering a whole session on health and wellness. So make sure also that you protect yourself na up-to-date ang inyong field health. Okay? Kasi mahal po magkasakit. Di ba? Uh, isang stroke, 1.8 million. Heart attack, 978,000. May rehab of 342,000. Lung cancer, 1.8 million. Mura na nga yan, ano? So be sure, kakainin ang retirement pay nyo kung you don't take care of your health. So again, save. Uulitin natin, mangungulit ako sa inyo. Give, erase that debt, invest. Look at starting a small business or sideline online. Yes, Virginita, we can mentor you for your online business. Just PM me and we will help you. All right. Spend on your health and spend, lastly, on continuing education. What do I mean by that? Personal growth. Financial mentors know this. The difference between rich people and poor people is what? What do you think is the answer? What is the difference between rich people and poor people? Isang katangian na... that makes the difference between rich and poor? What do you think? Type in the chat box. Ano sa tingin mo? Ang depression ng rich people tsaka poor people. Isang attitude or character that separates rich and poor. Sir, I will give a free pera na hindi bitin book. Okay, I'm waiting in the chat box. I'm waiting, I'm waiting. Any answers? What is the difference between rich and poor? Anong katangian? Anong kasing attitude? Ba? Wala may gusto ng libro ng libro ah. <laughs> Hindi ka nga kayo. Send secretive. Okay. The difference between rich people and poor people is this. Rich people would rather be educated than entertained. And poor people would rather be entertained than educated. They invest, rich people invest in education. Poor people, they spend their money on entertainment more than education. And I hope that today, this will start the journey of your education. Ang binigay ko po sa inyo ay isang seminar lang na maigsi. You know, the word seminar comes from the Latin uh, uh, seminar. Okay? Doon po nagagaling yung seed o similia. So, I hope that you took notes or you take the notes that will be given to you and plant this. Take care of it. Water it to make it grow. Okay? Kung nabitin kayo kasi right now, nasa isang oras lang tayo. We have Q&A right after this. Uh, shout out now to Marvin and Jess to get ready to go on board. Okay? 
But you can go to my website, rdroberto.com and invest in some books. If you're looking to be an entrepreneur, there's The Happy Entrepreneur. If you want to continue learning more about personal finance, I have the book, Pera na Hindi Bitin, 75 pesos lang, murang mura, and Money and Marriage, 220 pesos, and other books. I also just started a YouTube channel. And if you subscribe, okay, to RD Roberto TV, many of my talks are on that channel. Okay, I just started it um, a few months ago. Okay, now it has about 2,000 subscribers. It's also, it's now monetized, so it's also another way to earn online by posting your knowledge and um, online as well, okay? So just to recap and to review. The seven wise and diligent things to do with your retirement fund and your pension. Save it, pretend that you don't have it, keep on working, give, it's the best investment. Reduce or erase your debt. Except uh, only, but don't erase your debt kung meron ka mortgage sa bahay na binabayaran kasi mura lang naman ang interest nun, okay? Kung meron lang kayong utang that is like credit card debt, yun, bayaran nyo yun. Lalamunin ka ng interest nun. 36% yun. Okay, invest in stocks, bonds, real estate, gold even. Start a small business. I hope you were inspired to evaluate, inspect, uh, investigate of how to get even on an online business. Just PM me, message me if you want to learn more about that. Okay, and of course, spend on your health, on your mental health, and spend on continuing education. And this is what I did. This is the seven strategies that I did myself when I started learning about the biblical principles of finance you know, um, 15, 18 years ago. And it's worked for me. And I pray that it works for you. All right. So before we go on, there is a disclaimer. I will call on now. Uh, Marvin and uh, Jess, are you here? So I will introduce them. But before that, there's a disclaimer, OK? Just for legal purposes, if uh, you use any of the information here and get into trouble, it is my problem. It is not my problem, it is your problem, okay? <laughs> In short, investing without proper research and analysis is dangerous to your financial wealth and health. Please speak to your trusted, knowledgeable, and licensed advisor for more guidance, okay? So I am just sharing with you. I am not, uh, uh, I have given you the information and it's up to you what to do with it. And that is why I have invited people who are even much, much, much better and knowledgeable than me I invited Marvin Guillermo, who's based here in Manila, and Jess Uy from Singapore. They, um, Marvin is an author as well of many uh, books on finance, especially the stock market and investing. Okay, He is the guru of uh, the stock market. He is the author of Stock Smarts. He has 200,000 subscribers on his YouTube channel because he gives value uh, for your time. You know, all of these lessons are free on YouTube and you should subscribe to him. And we also have Jess Uy, uh, a personal finance consultant, global. Uh, he will teach you how to invest in the global markets. And so I'd like to call them in. And if we can call them in, we will now, now stop sharing the screen so that we can do Q&A. Is that okay, Sito? Okay, okay. Okay, so... Nandiyan uh, na Jesse and Marvin. Hi, uh, RD. Thank you for the introduction. Uh, I was uh, laughing a little bit when your disclaimer, we have the same disclaimer. <laughs> I got that from you. <laughs> oh, you got it from me. <laughs> uh, Thank yeah, you. Yeah. Okay, okay, good. <laughs> okay, okay. Uh, so Jess is here on board. I know that Marvin already entered the room, so... I yep. Hi, Arlie. Good morning. Ayun, Marvin. Okay. Na pala. Ayun. Good morning. Good morning. Para naka uniform tayo, Marvin. Ha? Puti. <laughs> All right, okay. guys. Sige. So, you know, we have two experts here. If I were you, I would fire away and ask questions. Uh, lahat ng gusto nyo itanong sa akin, kay Marvin, and kay Jess. Uh, especially about investing. Where to invest your hard-earned in retirement income or retirement check and your pension also okay do not let this opportunity 
pass by you know uh, many financial coaches they charge 50,000 you know, for uh, such advice like this pero sa ating ngayon libre all right so post your questions while you're thinking of your questions i will start asking uh, firing off to to Jess and Marvin if you can answer okay Jess sure. Marvin yes okay if you are in their position okay about to retire I don't know, in a month, a few months, or even a year, and you had a lump sum coming in, be it 1 million, 3 million, 5 million, 10 million, what, what would you advise? So maybe you can give your own advice to uh, the people who are now listening to this seminar. Okay, so, uh, shall I start? Yeah. Okay. 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 Singapore. Maka nagigising pa si Marvin eh. Baka magpo-focus sa stock market. <laughs> anyway, uh, for me, if I get a big lump sum, normally I will split it into, okay, if I'm at the retirement stage, uh, I will split uh, the allocation um, partly for recurring income and partly for um, uh, growth. No, uh, I think a lot of people are thinking that when you are in a retirement stage, uh, you shouldn't invest for growth anymore. But in my opinion, that's actually not the right way of thinking. Because mm -hmm. your money over time, uh, still, uh, it still it gets eaten up by inflation. Eh. Mm -hmm. So for me, it still makes sense to invest, uh, to grow. Uh, however, uh, siguro the first thing to do is just to calculate first um, what kind of assets can you put your money in such that it will cover all your expenses. Because that's the most important thing. Eh? When you're retired, you don't want to be in a position where um, you are scrambling for your uh, recurring income to pay for your expenses. Mm. Once that is covered, then the rest you can invest for growth. So that's, that's, that's how I would, I, would, I would look at it. So um, yeah. Maybe you can, you can uh, explain what you mean by growth. Okay. Uh, when 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 I mean what I mean by growth is like uh, maybe you put it in the equity markets or stock market, hmm. uh, or um, anything that is uh, not necessarily uh, yung recurring income lang. No, because uh, for example, uh, property in a way can also grow, but it's 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 less uh, less liquid. So you have to also take a look at your liquidity needs. No, because sometimes I think the key thing that you also that we also need to consider is the health especially if you are the at the older age no um, because that's one thing that can really wipe out a lot of your finances eh? hmm. so for me um depend if you already have insurance or not um, if you don't have insurance definitely that's something that you need to look into hmm. okay um because uh, you don't want to be in a position when 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 the stock market goes down or your Recurring income source gets hit, maybe like similar to what happened today with the pandemic. No, na, mm. na wala yung recurring income mostly for properties or businesses. Mm. Um, then you have a liquidity issue. So that's why the diversification is important for that purpose. No, uh, there there will be some at least if if you cannot make money from one one type one one of your asset class, maybe some others will. Okay. You know, so some something like that. So yeah. panong allocation, uh, Jess. In terms of percentages, um, in terms of percentages, uh, I, I, the the default that I usually recommend for people is, uh, you put stocks. Um, the the percentage is uh, hundred minus your age. No, so for example, if you're sixty, uh, then you can still have like forty percent stocks, you seventy thirty percent stocks, and so on and so forth. So it becomes smaller and smaller over time, but. Um, that percentage, I think, will vary depending on the amount of risk that you can take because not all, not everybody can take high risk. Mm -hmm. uh, the second thing is that for me, um, I, I, I don't focus much on the percentage, but how can I build a portfolio such that my recurring income is covered? Because there's a, there's a potential, let's say, for example, you get 100 million or 50 million or whatever the amount that you have, right? Mm -hmm. But you don't have that capital is not enough to pay for your recurring income. So that means that you need to find ways to kind of like 
cover that first because you need that on a on a monthly basis. Eh. That mm. yung mga excess, that's when you start moving. So for example, if your lump sum is smaller than what you need, so for example, 30 million, but you need 20, 20 million to generate I know uh, your the recurring income for your expenses. Then you you only have ten million for investments. But if you need twenty five million for recurring expenses, uh, uh, recurring income, then you have five million left. Now, mm -hmm. if you have let's say fifty million, but you only need twenty five mm -hmm. to generate the recurring income, then you have twenty five million for for uh, for growth uh, purposes. No, right. so I, I I look more into that because it's it's based on need instead of a. Uh, like a mathematical uh, kind of like uh, formula. Okay. Yeah. Yun. Ikaw, Marvin, may tanong ka ba kay Jess? Mm. Agree ka with that? What's your take on this? Yeah. Um, what what Jess si said, no, a lot of those things are, uh, yun din yung paniniwala ko that uh, you cover your you cover your basis first eh, if pagka ko man na retirement. So, when you ask the question, napaisip ako eh, how will I do it kung magre-retire ako a month from now or or a couple of months from now. So looking at it, just to give context, ako kasi I started preparing for retirement 22 years old pa lang ako. 22 years old pa lang ako. That's why... Yeah, 25 I, I ka lang ngayon, di ba? I'm 25. So, so I, 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 started er, I started early. So yung, yung what I did might not be applicable kasi at that time I was purely offensive. Eh. I was uh, very, very aggressive thinking about yung payoff noon 5, 10, 15 years into the future but uh but this this question is not really for me it's for people who are watching this so i'll segment it to to whoever is uh listening to this ako una kong gagawin kung may utang ako gagawin ko lahat ng pera makukuha ko doon babayaran ko muna yung utang ko that will be my first uh that will be my first priority because i don't want to get into retirement with a lot of uncertainties so Kung nabayaran ko na lahat ng utang ko, whatever is left, that's what I will use to uh, be tactical. So, depende pa yan. That's why RD said, personal finance is more personal than finance because depende pa, am I retiring na meron akong ipon? Am I retiring na wala? Kasi kung malaki ipon ko, iba ball game yun. Kung wala akong ipon, it will be, I, what I will do is lalagay ko muna sa savings yun. I would not think about investing yet if I don't have savings. That, mm -hmm. will, be my, that, will, that will be my battle plan. I would need to build up that nest egg first kasi kung mag-retire ako ng 60, 65 years old, for sure I will be getting still pension that could cover bits and pieces of my operational expenses. Eh. So, Aside from that part of yung steps na gagawin ko, I will look at, makan ba talaga yung gastos ko on a monthly basis? What will be my uh, base case scenario na ito yung kailangan kong gastos na normal lang yung living ko? And what will be my, uh, not not base case, but what will be a normal living na kasama na yung, yung pag-Starbucks, may pambayad ako ng Netflix subscription, na meron akong etc. Et et so titingnan ko, kaya bang bayaran nung makukuha kong pension yung base case ko na scenario. Kung if the answer is yes, lahat ng sobra kong pera, i-invest ko yun. So that's the way I would I would look at it. Pay debts first, build yung nest egg of savings. Kasi uh, yung interesting doon, if you're retiring at 60, 65, you're still young eh. You still yeah. have the opportunity also to find opportunities to earn, to make money na hindi mo na magagawa pag 85 years old ka. So the reason why I'm saying that is I'll build my savings, get out, get out of debt, then kung may natira, yun yung, yun yung ininegosyo ko, depende kung nasa na ako ngayon. But if you're asking me uh, from an investment standpoint, uh, um, and this is this is the biggest advantage of people in the military, Afsla is still amazing. You won't get that return anywhere. You won't get that, you won't get that return. And if you are relatively ano rin, major uh, risk covers, I'll still say pag ibig MP2, because pag ibig MP2 will be a lot of dividend paying stocks, a lot of bonds, a lot of those savings accounts, tapos tax free pa siya, tapos guaranteed pa ng, ng government also. So uh, stick to the ones that will give you fixed rates of return, na tax free, tapos guaranteed, tapos kung may extra dun, yun yung gagamitin ko pang negosyo. Pero tulad na sinabi ni RD, madami mga negosyo na minsan hindi kailangan pere, pagod, uh, discipline, patience, tsaka discarte yung kailangan para pal palakihin yun. So, tama yung sabi ni Jess na pag covered na yung base nyo, covered na yung kailangan nyo pang araw-araw, yun, yun yung magandang mentality eh. 
what if kahit anong mangyari sa negosyo ko na kahit malugi to kakain pa rin ako and that's what RD was doing eh nalugi yung negosyo niya pero kahit nalugi yun kumakain pa rin siya araw-araw iba yung tapang if you cover your bases so i i don't know if that addressed a lot of the uh, questions that people wanted to get no but ako that's how i will do it right Neng, idol talaga kayong dalawa. <laughs> Pero I agree, with, agree, we agree with Marvin on the clearing the debts. No, I, I think that's very important. Yep. But what kind of debt? I mean, if you owed money on your house, uh, wouldn't it be wise to just maintain yeah. that loan? Uh, uh, I, I, I think, I think for me, I, uh, for me, I, I'm, I'm, I'm just talking about consumer debt. Consumer. Uh, if it's Credit a housing card. loan, that's probably if if you're, you have to borrow money, the housing loan is probably the the only one or one of the best loans that you can get because you're you're living on it or you can make money out of it, no. Hmm. Uh, but for consumer loans, that's the one that you you need to clear, no. Right. Ako, ako naman, that's why it's so different. Iba ibang styles yan. Ako, I I pay off the housing loan still. Kasi hindi ko alam kung ano, magkano kikitain ang stocks ko 10 years from now. Eh. Pero alam ko kung hindi ko binayaran yung utang ko, may kailangan pa rin yung bayaran. So I want to take out as much of those variables as possible so that I can go on the offensive. That's why people think na, Marvin, but sobrang risky ka, nagbe-Bitcoin ka. Why are you investing in startups? Kasi lahat nung, kasi hindi ko na iniisip na if everything goes bad, wala akong, kailang, wala akong ganun kalaking responsibility na kailangan ko bayaran. Hmm. So but what Jess is saying is totally true also. Kung yung pinapauwi niyo siya tapos yung rental niyo can compensate for can compensate for yung amortization then right. that's a very very good use of leverage pero hmm. tama yun na credit card ubusin lahat ng credit card na na utang saka utang sa kamag-anak wag kalimutan yun yung isa sa pinakaimportante <laughs> na nakakalimutan natin na bayaran ayun yeah. importante yun oh, i'm sure hindi nakakalimutan ng mga kamag-anak yun kakatok niyan pag nalaman ng retire na kayo Right. Yeah. I, I sorry. I, I clarify one thing on the housing loan now because I'm coming from a Singapore perspective. Mas sobrang baba kasi ng interest namin dito. Eh. Mm, <laughs> so no. our our loan one percent yun yun di ba? One percent one percent one percent no. Oh. So oh, so, so eh. if I'm if I'm I'm looking at that, then then definitely the in maintaining the loan will be easy because I can easily outperform it. So I think tama tama din si Marvin in a way. Uh, we have to factor in the interest rate, in my opinion. If it's sa akin ang base case scenario is that if your investment can outperform the interest of your loan and it's reliable, then it's okay. But if it's if it cannot outperform, then uh, I'd rather clear off the loan first. Yeah. Can I do a survey here? Uh, just put in the chat box if you are if you have invested in in stocks. If you have any questions? Can can you just uh, Participants, can you put in the chat box if you have invested in stocks? Just say yes or no. Okay, just curious. Okay, yes. Virginita. Okay. No. All right. Okay. Okay, so I guess people are also wary of disclosing their investments. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> okay, lang yan. <laughs> But let's say based on our sample size of two, 50-50 are, are in the stock market. And 50 yet, not, uh, not yet. Okay. Yes, but not high risk. Thank you, Franco. All right. So uh, I'll ask both of you, Marvin and Jess. Kanina I was mentioning... Okay, sabi ni Alberto, too much uncertainties, not this time. So maybe uh, both of you can answer that uh, or can address that concern. Okay, no, I have to learn it muna. Good. So how about uh, Marvin, I mentioned earlier, di ba? Uh, I know some people who will not buy a stock if it doesn't pay dividends. You mentioned in one of your videos that you can actually, uh, if you, there was someone who asked a question, you know, what stocks can I invest in and how much so that I can earn? Hundred thousand a month. Okay, so would you do that, or would you actually advise people to do that? And do do you do it yourself? Mm, the, so it it so answering the question first for me, no, I separate my portfolios. Meron ako pang mm. dividends, meron ako pang growth, meron ako pang trade, meron ako pang uh, mas mabilisang mas mabilisang trade. So uh, dividend is amazing, pero you have to understand that every time na papasok ka sa stock market, 
it's never about kung anong stock yung kailangan bilhin. But it's all about kung anong stock yung pinag-aralan nyo and kung anong stock yung based dun sa research nyo will give you the dividends that you want. So, ta- lahat ng binigay ni RD na stocks doon, Meralco, Glow, PLDT, Aboytis Power, they all give uh, good dividends. Pero may, may level of research pa rin na kailangan. Kasi yung by the time that video was made, I think that was August, iba na yung ginalaw ng presyo ng stocks na yun from today, January 2021, tapos iba rin yung uh, pwede nilang ibigay na dividends also for uh, for 2021. So uh, in my, that that the reason why it's in my channel because it's catered already to people who are in the stock market. So my my I guess tama naman na you can go into dividends pero dapat may background na na may background na sa stock market because if you will just come in, ah, bili ko lang ito, meral ko kasi may dividends yun, it will subject you to risk also. Kasi what do you do if pagkabili mo na stock na meral ko, bumagsak? Uh, hmm. Can you can you stomach yung uh, yung volatility na yun na what if bumagsak siya ng 10%? What if bumagsak siya ng 15%? So hmm. I, I think there's more there's more layers of analysis na kailangan uh, ma- ma-add doon. So if, if, the, if na, nakuha na yung research na yun na okay, at Siguro yung kailangan masagot ng tao pag bibili sila ng stocks sa may dividends is ano yung company na binili ko? Uh, okay ba yung presyo pag kabili ko sa kanya? Then, pag binili ko nito, tingin ko ba ma- may chance ba na mawala yung dividend niya or humina yung dividend niya in the next few years? I'll give you an example. Uh, Globe Telecom, is a, it, it will give you around 5-6% na, na dividends as of the new current price niya as of today. So, pwede ko tanongin, hmm, Tingin ko ba hihina yung paggamit ng tao ng ng broadband? Tingin ko ba hihina yung paggamit ng tao ng uh, ng ng telecom net tele, telephone network? Uh, isipin ko pa, oh may dito na papasok. Ano ba yung threat ng dito sa earnings ng Globe? Tapos isipin ko pa, teka, Globe owns uh, GCash. Eh GCash, nilabas nila sa balita, valued already 1 billion US dollars na yung GCash. So how does that factor in sa sa, sa sa kita ng globe. So, yun. There, there are a lot of questions that if you want to go into the stock market, uh, I, I think those have to be asked. Uh, hindi ganun kahirap yung stock market pero hindi rin siya dumadating sa point na dapat papasok na lang tayo dahil uh, sinabi ko or sinabi ni Ardy yun. Sobrang daming research yung kailangan din ilagay uh, when you enter into the stock market. That's why I, I would always tell people na kunyari first time nyo lang mag-invest tapos you just want a return kagad. You go already for the ones that will give you a uh, fixed rate na lesser lesser risk also or uh, like w- what Jess is advocating yung mga mutual funds also that will give you na hindi na kayo yung nag-iisip kung anong kailangan niyo bilhin so pwedeng ganong layer of analysis ay okay yan may tanong nga si uh, si Mills and Amin J okay uh, what kind of stocks shall we purchase in the stock market given the uncertainties okay that's a whole seminar pero maybe a short answer uh, yeah and okay. what do you say about uh, the is, dollars? Is it, is, is it me or Jess? I, I think either of us can answer, Marvin. I have an answer for this, but you answer first. Uh, alam mo na mo yung sagot ko dyan. Eh. <laughs> yeah, yeah, but I'll, 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 give a, I'll give a quick answer lang para Jess can answer. Uh, sa stock market kasi ano eh, to make it super short, maximum risk, maximum uncertainty, maximum upside, only though kung if you can stomach it. Or parang ganito, uh, mas nakakatakot bumili sa BGC ng condo 20 years ago nung wala pa nakalatag. Pero sobrang mura niya. Ngayon, sobrang ganda na ng Bonifacio Global City, pero sobrang mahal. Every time na you're presented with uncertainty, every time you're presented with risk, it places the greatest opportunity also to earn. Pero yun, yun talaga, uh, the stock market is a game of conviction na dapat pag pinapasok mo siya, kahit lahat ng tao natatakot, pero pinag-aralan mo na mabuti, I'll give you an example. During the lockdown, bago kayo pa sa kay Jess, during the lockdown, si RD, sabi niya, hindi, Cebu Pacific ako, Cebu Pacific ako. Sabi ko, wag yan, wag yan. Kasi ano yan? Kasi air, air, airline yan. Lo and behold, fully convinced siya about it. When you look at it now, malaki inakit ng Cebu Pacific. Even though kala ko hindi akit, pero RD stuck with his conviction. So, parang ganun. Okay. Yeah, sobrang yaman okay. ni RD, guys. Sobrang yaman. Sabi, sabi niyo, wag magpautang, pero kung kailangan niyo na pera, RD Roberto. <laughs> Okay, I, I'll just share my screen now. Um, I, I think uh, Marvin knows this and Ardi knows this, that um, I also invest in the stock market, but I actually advocate um, pooled funds for most people. And the majority, the bulk of the investment normally in pooled funds 
And the reason behind this is because hindi naman lahat ng tao have the patience and temperament to invest in the stock market. And if you're the type na ayaw mo na mag-isip, eh, it, this is your next best um, option. And also, if you're a newbie, this is probably your best option to start if, you're wanna, if you get into the stock market. And the reason behind that is because uh, you have professional fund managers who's running it for you. Now, um, there are different opinions about the um, uh, mutual funds, no, uh, pooled funds. Uh, I'm just going to give a little bit of perspective, um, not just for Philippines, but if you're able to invest from a global perspective. No? So if you look at, for example, in my screen today, no, uh, I, 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 I created this uh, infographic uh, a week ago. This is the uh, fund performance last year, no, in 2020. No, if if uh, Philippines probably is not doing as well from a general market perspective, but if you look from a global perspective, actually uh, the top five funds last year all generated more than 100%. No, um, sustainable energy was up almost 180%, and then disruptive innovation around 142%. So there's a lot of these options overseas that will give you high upsides. Uh, but of course, it doesn't come without risk. No, there's always risk involved. So this one need to be discussed in 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 more detail. Um, and then if you look at the uh, conviction picks at the bottom, these are the ones that I actually recommend to my clients. So yung yung kung saan talaga kami nag-invest, uh, we're mostly invested in disruptive innovation uh, in gold. Pero yung gold. Uh, nag-exit kami around August of last year. Eh. So when we exited, we were up around 50 to 100 percent at that time. So most of my clients were up 50 to 100 percent, and the portfolio, most of them were holding somewhere between one to three years. Because uh, nag-start nag kami nagpasok mga 2017. Eh. So it's not something that you want to come in in a short, in a very short period. Uh, better if you have a longer time frame. Uh, but there's there's a good upside. Um, I think. If you are willing and op open enough to look into uh, overseas investing, uh, that would be one of your options. No? Um, I think the, the fund managers actually ha still have a lot of value to offer, especially if you don't have the time or the expertise to kind of like do the, your own investing. No? So if you look here, um, some of these, ito may mga negative dito, nasa watch list lang actually, we didn't invest here yet. Um, uh, majorities in the in the other ones now, um, and then Siguro just to give perspective, let me just go quick uh, run through quickly, yung top returns over the years no. So 2009, uh, 2009, uh, that was when we just came out of recession, di ba? So last last time, so uh, normally when you just come out of recession, malakas yung return. So if you notice 2009, most of the funds were up more than hundred percent. Uh, 2010 for the top fund was 48 uh, 2011 around 10 after that uh, 64 yung top no uh, after that 70% no 65% 2014 uh, 2015 28% medyo mataas no but um okay 2017 48 2018 7 2019 56 uh, then 2020 but uh, i would caution you that Whatever is listed in the top funds doesn't mean that it do yung mag reflect sa portfolio mo because you never know which one will perform best. Eh. So for example, in the last year, out of the top five funds, um, only one of my recommendation got into the top five, but still, uh, I think it's it's done quite quite well. One hundred forty two. No. Um. So that's that's your option. That's one of your options if you want growth. Uh, and then there's a question about dollars, no? So you can you can also look into that uh, because this is of, obviously this is not in Philippine pesos. Um, and then um, yeah, so so it's it's an option for you um, other than the Philippine uh, market. Yep. Yeah. Okay. Thanks, Jess. Just in case, can you uh, put in the chat box, Jess, your contact details if anyone's interested to. Uh... Uh, ask for yeah. questions or ask for advice or coaching on how to invest globally from sure. uh, kasi may advantages eh uh, yes nothing there in Singapore no? 
Hindi, uh, there's a question about how about investing in Bitcoin and uh, dollars. What can you say about those? Ayun. Si Marvin, mayroon siyang video about Bitcoin eh. Pero short answer, hmm. Marvin. Uh, I'll, I'll answer dollar first. No? Okay. Interesting about the dollar, 47, 48. Uh, the reason why mababa siya is because two things. Number one, mababa yung imports natin sa Philippines ngayon. So kung mababa, mahina yung imports because may weakening sa economy, hindi masyado kailangan yung dollar. So here, he, this is something that you can, ano, but please study it. Huwag lang gawin to dahil sinabi ko. Once the economy starts to pick up again, mawala na tayo sa total lockdown, babalik ulit lahat ng mga transactions, babalik ulit lahat ng mga imports na yan. So essentially, babalik din yung dollar to 50, 49, 51 to where it was pre-pandemic. So kung inisip nyo, teka, babalik, babalik tayo sa normal. Ah. E 48 yung dollar ngayon, bili kaya ako tapos pag nag-50, 51, benta ko. But again, please ano, ah, study it also. Don't just take my word for it. Second one is Bitcoin. Uh, bit Bitcoin, in my opinion, is... Uh, if you watch a lot of yung nasa online sa internet, uh, majority na makikita nyo scams. Uh, so let's mm. let's try to eliminate yung mga scams first kasi sobrang dami nag-offer. They, they say it's Bitcoin pero hindi naman talaga siya Bitcoin. They give exorbitant returns saying na Bitcoin yun pero hindi naman. Kasi yung mahirap sa Bitcoin yun since it's very very new, it's hard for people to understand kung ano talaga siya and it's hard for people to understand kung saan talaga nanggagaling yung uh, saan talaga nanggagaling yung gains noon so remove that first uh, bitcoin to be to make it super simple is a currency like the US dollar however yung US dollar yung nagbibigay sa kanya ng value kasi sinabi ng US government meron kang 100 dollars we will guarantee that babayaran namin kayo yung bitcoin and doon pumapasok lahat ng controversy is walang nagba backup noon uh, kaya lang siya nagkakaroon ng value kasi may mga tao na willing siya bilhin at that part, or willing makipagpalit ng Bitcoin at that particular price and yung difference niya sa dollar is yung scarcity ng Bitcoin there will only be 21 million Bitcoins forever na yun unlike yung dollar, that's why nagkakaroon ng shift sa Bitcoin, yung US government print sila ng print, ng print, ng print, ng print and people are thinking na paano na yung value ng dollar they keep on printing, so balik ulit sa Bitcoin uh, Kaya siya binibili because of the scarcity of it. And because, uh, kung napapansin nyo ngayon, everything now is moving digital. So, kung familiar kayo sa PayPal, familiar kayo sa pag-transfer ng pera sa PayMaya, sa Gcash, uh, ganun lang halos yung Bitcoin. Digital money, pero hindi peso, tsaka hindi dollar yung gamit. Kaya lang siya nagiging attractive ngayon is because yung galaw niya, sobrang, sobrang lakas eh. Uh, I remember March 2020, Bitcoin was below uh, 4,000 US dollars. A couple of days ago, it was around 43,000 US dollars. Wow. So, in, in my opinion, it's speculative that dahil speculative din siya, may opportunity dun sa galaw niya. Uh, Bitcoin could be the currency of the future or it could be nothing at all. Pero, uh, may ko mag-invest eh. So, and, and just to give you context on kung bakit ako, bakit Ganito ako mag-isip kasi mas gusto kong maglagay ng pera sa bagay na may potential sa akin ng return kesa ibili ko siya ng milk tea na, na hindi ko natataba lang ako pag milk tea ako ng milk tea. So some, something like that. I'd rather buy stuff that will become an asset for me in the future versus uh, something na sure ako na bumili ako ng 10 rubber shoes. 10 years from now, wala ng value yon Yung Bitcoin, may chance mawala yung value pero may chance din na, na pagdalagyan ko. Uh, this is not an asset class that I would recommend for everyone. This is an this is an investment that I would suggest to people na nag nag stocks na naka experience na ng pagbaba. Kasi it, it's very very emotional and if you cannot control it, uh, malaking yung chance sa pwedeng mawala ng pera. And well, hindi ko pa sinasabi na pwede kang this this is a bit complicated already. Pwede kang mag short, pwede kang mag leverage. And when you short and you leverage, mas lalo yung chance na pwede mawala lahat ng pera. So kung sa stock market, pinag-usapan natin na bumagsak, sabi ni RD, hawakan mo lang kasi bumibili ka ng company. Sa Bitcoin talaga, because of leverage and shorting, pwedeng mag-zero yung pera nyo. So, yun. Okay. So, it's, it's like uh, an example talaga. Can, can I add to that? Sure. Um, sure. Okay. So, let me share something. No? Um, I think uh, a lot of Tama si Marvin, no? there's a lot of uh, interest on Bitcoin right now because uh, malaki yung move. No? Uh, I think this is something that um, it's, 
probably not easy for for uh, newbies to go into uh, because of the huge swings. But I want to highlight a few things that um, if you're looking into growth in the future, um, the, I, I'm sharing with you a screen uh, that there, there are several eras where um, there's a huge transformation in, in, in how um, the economies have moved forward. No? So it's like an industrial revolution. No? So before there was steam engine, the railways, and then there's a, there's a time in around the 1990, 1980s, 1990s, you have the telephone, automobile, electricity, you know? um, and then later on, in the 1980s, 2000, you have the computers, internet. Nowadays, uh, this is what we're looking at. No? So we're looking at artificial intelligence, energy storage, yung mga batteries. No? Like the, the batteries now are running cars, uh, robotics, no? um, uh, genome sequencing. Uh, genome sequencing um, will be very, very interesting in the future. This is where you have research on how do you treat cancer. Uh, in fact, there's one um, article that came out around mid of last year uh, about some uh, uh, DNA sequencing that they're using to treat uh, childhood blindness. So, so there's already these type of things. And the, the movement in this area is really in an exponential way. Because it, it used to cost around 3 billion US dollars to uh, to sequence a whole human genome. That was around 20 years ago. Uh, nowadays, it only costs around $1,000. So there's a huge drop in the cost, and that helps a lot of the researchers to really accelerate a lot in terms of their research and how to uh, treat um, uh, hereditary illnesses and all that. No? And then the last uh, innovation platform that I want to highlight is uh, the blockchain platform. Now, with those blockchain platform, that's where all the Bitcoin comes in. Uh, but the thing is that um, itong things that I'm mentioning today, this is actually part of the Disruptive Innovation Fund that I mentioned earlier. And the, the advantage of using these uh, fund managers is that uh, because they have early research and, and in-depth research in, in these areas, uh, I found out that these guys bought some of their Bitcoin when it was below 1,000 and they're still holding it, right? And so I think this is where you can take advantage of the research capabilities and the expertise of the fund managers. No? So, so th those are the things that I would say now for if you want to have exposure on this. Personally, I don't have, I don't have a direct um, exposure to Bitcoin, but I have exposure to disruptive innovation, which has uh, indirect uh, exposure to Bitcoin uh, mm. because some of the companies that they buy, uh, for example, uh, a company in the U.S. called Square uh, is actually, um, it's like a Bitcoin part. Uh, it, it helps uh, small businesses. Uh, I can go into a long story about that another time. But one of the things that they do is now they have a portion of their business is for people to buy and sell Bitcoin through their cash application, no? So, so in a way, the, the transactions when you buy and sell, that's how they make money. So in a way, uh, regardless if the Bitcoin goes up or down, they still make money because when people buy and sell, they, they make money from the exchange. Think of it like a money changer, right? Mm. Does the money changer uh, make money from the fluctuation of the currency? Uh, yes and no. But definitely for every transaction, they will make money because... May, may fee sila for the transaction, correct? So, so that's, that's how you can, you can take advantage of this uh, in a way, not just for um, uh, direct exposure to the asset class, but it could, it could also be uh, indirect exposure. Hmm. Wow. Thanks, Jess. Ah. Baka sarap ipagpatuloy over, ano, over ramen. Tawag <laughs> 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 natin si Marvin. I know, uh, Sito, how are we doing on time? Kasi 11.07 na. Okay lang, ano? okay lang, RD. Actually, uh, we have until uh, 12 noon. Wow. To wrap up, uh, <laughs> your, <laughs> ano, to wrap up your slot. Uh, kasi uh, sinama mo yata yung Q&A sa yung uh, presentation. Yes. Okay lang. But uh, that's, beyond, that's beyond that to our CJJ. Okay. Pero pa mga question dito sa, ano, sa chat box. Yeah, Paano yeah. naman daw kung less than 1 million yung 
billions kasi yung pinag-uusapan natin eh. Paano less than 1 million yung kanyang retirement pay? Ano naman ang investment? No, that's coming from ano, Region 8 participants. Okay. I think they're a group yata sila eh. Group sila na naka-big screen siguro sila ngayon listening to your talk. Mm. So, question from one of the participants from Region 8. And yeah, Region 8. That's the uh, latest summer area. Okay. okay. Ano masasabi nyo? Kung uh, so, di pa gano'n ka yung pera. Uh, <laughs> same principles pa rin ba? Uh, it's just the amount that has changed. How about you, Marvin? Hmm. Uh, it, it will always go back dun sa ano, titignan ko kung magkano yung gastos ko pang araw-araw. And then titignan ko kung magkano yung nakuha ko. Titignan ko rin kung magkano yung ipon meron ako. So, uh, gag una kong gagawin is gag hanap ako ng paraan no, na ano ba yung pwede mo paglagyan na pera na to na pwede niyang tususan yung pang-araw-araw pang, pang pang ko. So, kunyari, wala pa siya sa, wala siya sa millions. Pwede dumating sa point na baka kul baka kulang baka kulang to so pag kulang siya pwedeng hybrid yung pwedeng yung gawin portion of that uh, lump sum uh, i-invest niyo or pag start niyo na business pero kailangan niyo pa rin na magkaroon ng active income para matustusan yung gastos uh, yun yung uh, yun yung yun yung trade yun yung trade off no uh, you have you have your you have your expenses pero since may pension kayo your pensions also will subsidize yung expenses na yun. So, kukumpitin nyo kung magkano yung kailangan pang pera na kailangan yung masubsidize uh, from that investment. So, depende kasi yan kung gano'ng kalaki yung expenses ninyo. So, alas yung, ganito lang, alas yung na, for example, tinanggal nyo lahat yun, binawas yung pension, natira, kailangan mo ng 30,000 pesos. Tapos, for example, may, na, may nakuha kayong 500,000, may nakuha kayong 500,000, say, less, less than 1 million example. So yung 500,000 na yun para matustusan yung 30,000 na kulang is it needs to earn 360,000 pesos a year. So hmm. syempre 500,000 earning 360,000 pesos a year hindi pwede sa bonds yun. Hindi pwede rin sa uh, hindi, hindi kakayanin ng mutual funds yun na consistent. The only logical thing na pwedeng gawin is inegosyo siya. Uh, I, I, I think uh, if if the capital is smaller tapos mas kailangan mo ng return na mas malaki para matustusan yung gastos, uh, kailangan siya negosyo. Kaso, yung gusto ko share din sa inyo, kung hindi pa kayo nagninegosyo, uh, medyo risky proposition din yon, Kasi you will start with a lot of money tapos wala pang experience. Sure, sure yan, lahat ng kilala ko na negosyo nagkamali na wala ng pera. And it would be uh, it would be harder to do a business for the first time na doon na nakasalalay lahat. Mm. So, what I would do also is, I will try to complement it na maghahanap ako ng isa pang source of income, whether anything na service-based or anything na pinapalit ko yung oras ko para sa kita ko, kahit, kahit, uh, kahit low capital siya. Para habang I'm still figuring out anong gagawin ko sa 500,000 ko, may pumapasok na. Kasi iba yung tapang ng loob pag alam mo may pumapasok na hindi doon nakasalalay sa business lang na yun. Kasi kung doon nakasalalay, kung maga naka-all in, if that flops, if that folds, yes. uh, pwede, mawala, pwede mawala lahat eh. So yun, uh, pagka-retire ko, hindi ako magmamadali na gagamitin yung pera makuha ko. Pero magmamadali ako na maghahanap muna na may pumapasok. And uh, totoo yun no, yung sa Lazada, uh, that's amazing. Um, even before this pandemic, sinasabi ko lang sa lahat ng mga tao, gawin nyo lang. Depende kung saan kayo nakatira. No? Ako gagawin ko, kunyari, nagsisimula ako sa wala ngayon. Uh, pupunta ako sa Divisoria, bibili ako ng mga item doon, tapos bibenta ko sa Shopee sa Lazada. Hindi, magugulat kayo, ang dami kong kilala na nagbibenta sa Shopee at Lazada. Binibili nila sa Divisoria ng 50 pesos, binibenta nila ng 500 sa Lazada. Yun yung arbitrage ng online. Hmm. And, and pag nakadevelop kayo ng relationship doon, for example, sa Divisoria, or may kilala kayo nagbibenta, or gumagawa ng mga sushi bake ganyan. Bibenta ko yung sushi bake, uh, bibenta ko yung sushi bake mo. Uh, tapos pag nag-order ako sa iyo, saka ko lang babayaran. So wala kayong capital din na linalabas eh. There's so many hmm. ways that can be entrepreneurial. Hmm. So sagot ko doon, uh, kung tingin yung kulang, be entrepreneurial, start a business. Yeah. I'll add to that Marvin, ganda na sinabi mo. Actually last year, no August skeptical ako kay kay Miriam pinasukan niya yung uh, Show my king online franchise, but her capital was so small. Para so bali wala kasi sixteen thousand lang eh. But 
you know, the returns right now is bigger than what we had invested in our all of our offline food franchises, na million million. <laughs> the sixteen thousand is returning like sixty thousand a week, you know, uh, because she's working it. She's doing presentations. She's inviting people. She's <clears throat> selling online. Uh, so, yung mga ganong klaseng investment na low capital, okay, pwede niyong pasukan yon. Unlike starting your own, you know, investing in 50 motorcycles and then starting your own um, <coughs> delivery service. Yan, medyo risky yun kasi may learning curve yan eh kung hindi mo pa ginagawa yun before. So, you start small. Uh, start small, an amount that if you don't do anything about it, hindi nang masakit na mawala sa'yo. Like 16,000 is not, not a lot of money if, you have, if you're getting 500,000. And consider that, learn, you know, tuition fee if it loses. Pero, yun nga, uh, the, may, dun sa online franchise, may mga kasama ka, may mga coaches. Uh, like si Miriam now, she's a coach. And she can help you. I put her email address there. I don't know everything about the business. She's the one doing it. Pero sa lahat ng negosyo namin ngayon, yun ang, Yan ang best return so far. Then we're going to set up also uh, our own Lazada store <clears throat> because we have access to uh, dairy farms. So yung mga sweets na mga you know, pastillas, etc. Na sabi dun ni Joseph dun sa video that Filipinos love to order pala sweets online. So that's, that's, a, that's a tip. So daming pwede. Kung less than 1 million, yun, maraming pwede gawin. Or, you know, Kung ayaw magtrabaho, <laughs> you rely on your pension, lagay mo na lang sa AppSly, yung 1 million mo, eh, magkano yun? Kikita ka ng 10,000 a month, di ba? Sa okay, interest. Oo, oh, sa interest. Uh, unless napuno na nila yung 1 million nila sa AppSly. <laughs> <laughs> Oo, oh, may, may limit na yata. No? Na pwede, hanggang 1 million lang yata. Ang ano? Ang, uh, may limit na. You can't deposit more than yeah. 1M. Or, tama ba yun? Baka meron pang silang ibang alam. Okay. I'll, I'll, I'll share this also, Ordi. Um, maganda yung sa, sa ano, no? uh, yung business kasi, yung technique sa business is uh, meron meron tayong kanya-kanyang unique advantage na hmm. either alam ni Ordi na hindi ko alam na siya sobrang galing. Sobrang galing doon. So I'll just give an example dun sa motorcycle. Kung alam na alam mo talaga yun, hmm. then go for it. Pero hmm. what I will suggest is you start small. Instead hmm. of 50, isa muna. Yeah. Then tingnan mo, Kaya ko ba yung sakit ng ulo na to, yung sa driver, yung et yung sa nangyayari, can, can I actually handle it? Then when it starts getting better, sige, dalawa, then apat, then walo. Pero you, kasi iba yung problema ng isa versus problema ng 50. Iba yung skills na kailangan sa isa versus yung, yung sa 50. Pero the only, the way for you to get to 50 is to start from one. That's why uh, RD has been quoting Bible verses, no? Uh, sabi din sa Bible that if you're faithful with little, you will be faithful with much. And uh, yun, yung, yun yung suggestion ko that kung pangarap nyo magka, na, magkaroon ng sariling Jollibee someday, mag-start kayo ng something ng mal, mali, malit ngayon. Then you start scaling it up. May mga milestones kayo na pwedeng, uh, pwedeng ilagay. Pero uh, maniwala kayo na lahat ng business pwede. Kaya nga yung mga tao na nag-junk shop, kumikita pa rin sila eh. Kasi alam nila yun, magaling sila doon and they're solving a need. Siguro to, to end what I'm saying is yung business na sisimula nyo since magre-retire na kayo, uh, gawin nyo na yung business na gusto nyo talaga. Kasi kung hmm. gusto nyo siya, kahit, kahit 68 years old kayo, it will never feel like work. It will, kahit napapagod kayo, pero alam nyo yung gusto nyo, yung ginagawa nyo, sobrang nag enjoy kayo, gagawin nyo siya kahit 80 years old kayo. So, gawin nyo yung gusto nyo, gawin nyo yung something na alam nyo magaling kayo, na may edge kayo laban kay RD, laban sa akin, na tingin nyo kayo lang makagawa or may, uh, may, may unique advantage kayo doon. Then third is, uh, paano kayo makapagbigay ng value sa sa customers nyo or sa marketplace kung sino man yung binibentahan nyo. Kasi uh, it, it will always be the person who gives the most value that will always win. Yung mga customer ninyo, hindi nila alam gano'ng kayo kasipag alam lang nila gano'ng kadaming value yung nakukuha nila doon sa produkto or ser- service na binibigay nyo. So if we, I think uh, if you have those three, then you start small and then wag magmamadali. I, I think it will be very, very good. And if you're 60 years old, 65 years old, that's young. What if you live until 85? What if you live until 90? You have 20 plus years to grow something. Yun. Kaya si Ardy sobrang yaman eh. Kasi <laughs> yeah. sobrang, galing, sobrang galing niya. Sobra. Si ginagaya kita eh. 
Beth, ko alam yun, si RD gano'n kayaman. Grabe, grabe yan. Grabe yan. I, I'll just add something for the businesses. Ah. Um, actually, I've also started a little bit before. Uh, I think what's very important really is to find the right partners. And not only the partners, if you can do it on your own, that's that's probably the best. If you have the right uh, skills, no? Very important yung skills eh, because I... Just like me, um, I, I I have a lot of clients na OFW. And normally, ang ginagawa nila is nakikipag-partner sila sa mga kaibigan nila, sa mga family nila to run the business. But the, there's a huge difference between you running the business and other people running the business because iba kasi yung pera mo. Pag pera mo kasi, normally, you'll be more careful with it. Eh. Diba? And if you're running the, the business on your own, uh, then normally it, it it will hopefully do better. But of of course you also need to get yung mga partners who have the skills to to help you grow, no? Um. So so in my personal experience, um, we started running a business uh, before. I have I have two couple partners in the Philippines, um, and then we closed it down after one year <laughs> because um I think the problem was that uh. If because I'm not there on a day-to-day -day basis, uh, different yung treatment nung business compared to you're doing it like uh, like hands-on. No, so I guess uh, maganda yung mga uh, recommendation ni Marvin and uh, RD about this. Uh, but I think it's just important to do proper business planning and assess yourself in terms of your skills. Uh, with regards to the capital, um, if you have say any interest in doing global investing i would say that you start in philippines first unless you have at least around ten thousand dollars no so that would be around um so kung singapore dollars yan that's that will be uh 350 to 400 you can start off um and and that's my that's the minimum that i would uh recommend people to start with kasi uh, talo ka sa pagpadala ng pera pag uh, you, you start with a smaller amount. Eh. Uh, kasi may remittance cost ka eh. no? uh, the, the larger the amount, the better it is uh, because of the cost savings on, on, on sending the money. Uh, and also because you have a lot more access. But if your capital is less than 1 million and you really, really, really want to start something overseas, uh, I would say around 350 to 400,000 would be your absolute minimum. Um, and then the rest, um, if you if you're the type who don't want to run your own business, gusto mo relax ka lang, uh, walang sakit sa ulo, uh, you can you can go back to the stock market uh, using uh, uh, pooled funds. Um, pero kung yeah, and, but I think the the the, the businesses that uh, RD mentioned about those yung sixteen thousand yung franchise, uh, siguro dapat gawin ko narin no. <laughs> Magandang idea yun, right? uh, RD, but uh, I guess it's probably for my. <laughs> pwede, pwede. RD. Yes, RD. Yes, sito. Yes. Oh, yes. Um, kumusta yung uh, dealings mo with government uh, regulations like BIR and CPC? Because in our experience here in Quezon City, prior to Mayor Joy, it's really horrible mm. working with Quezon City Hall. Mm. And uh, there's so many requirements, yeah. so many hassles that you have to go through. Mm. And that's why I think not only me, but even um, other friends of ours who are into business, they have to close the business simply because of so much harassment. Mm. From Quezon, Quezon City Hall, even us, and with BIR, uh, even with this online thing, you have to go through all of those things, yeah. register it. Kaya sabi ko, we would better close it. Kaya I agree with the with the uh, Jess or yeah. Marvin that hmm. if you don't have any passion for business, hmm. then find a partner. Hmm. A partner who is skill, skillful and trusted, hmm. yes. who's into business. Yeah. Like for example, uh, RD, Jan Kuba of uh, French Baker. Uh, French Baker. Hmm. He shared with us. No, I don't take any part. I don't take. I don't franchise. Hmm. But I welcome investors hmm. to uh, in my company, 
And well, just based on siguro agreements, then I'll give you returns on a monthly or a yearly basis. Yeah. Perhaps siguro you can do that, no? Kami right. siguro namin, we'll invest in you. Di ba? You have already shown maybe we should because we don't have well, we don't have the time okay mm-hmm. we don't have the, the knowledge and uh, the experience to go into that right. but for for some people here who are not really into business maybe they can start uh, looking for partners like you para you talpan na franchising yan ah <laughs> oh you know, di ba? Di ba? you have something like that kasi para ano if you're not passionate about it then, then don't go for it Because yes. if you're not passionate in starting a small business, it will just collapse. Later. Yes, I totally agree. Yep. The biggest capital requirement of a business is energy. Your energy, your enthusiasm, your time. Uh, more than the money. Maybe lang mag, mag, ano eh, magtaya at maglagay at mag-invest. But uh, if you don't have the stomach, see Marvin kasi 25 years old lang, kaya super energetic. Pero... At my age, I'm 54. I'm looking now at, you know, I'm winding down. I'm trying to simplify my life because, as you said, maraming ano, I've dealt with the BIR. Uh, I haven't. I didn't yes. mention I'm part of an advocacy for uh, uh, good tax citizenship with Mona Brea. So endorsers come in the Miriam on paying the right taxes. But you know, having said that, you know, I still, kahit nasa non-audit program ka na. We, <laughs> Yeah. Uh, there are still times that the BIR will still chase after you, but you know, all these things are just part and parcel of of business. So, and these are some of the distractions and even the irritants. But look, see, uh, Mon Abrea made that into a business. He he set up uh, Abrea Consulting Group, and you can subscribe to him. He has a service where you will pay something like a hundred thousand a year. So that sila, sila na mago audit sa if you're paying the right taxes, and then they will certify you uh, as a good tax citizen. And once you have that uh, certificate, off limits ka na sa BIR, kasi meron sila agreement with the BIR. So ang ganda ng negosyo na they made a, an irritant or a problem into a service, which is Mona Brea's passion, you know, taxes, <laughs> Shane tax whiz. So, pwedeng, uh, yun. So, you know, kahit may mga headaches, you can actually turn those headaches into businesses. But if you don't have the stomach nga for that, di mag-invest ka na lang. Like, I invested in Homeschool Global. I'm just an investor. Hindi ko kaya mag-deal with all the children and the parents. and uh, So, I said, I will just invest, you know, help out with marketing. Pero yung partner ko magpapatakbo niyan. Hindi kami. So, pwedeng ganun. So there are ways, and that's why uh, uh, you know, Marvin is here. I really suggest you subscribe to his YouTube channel. You'll learn so much. Um, and then also Jess uh, is here. So he's very, very generous with his. Dati, kumingan ng 30-minute meeting. Nagpusa kami, tatlong oras. Pinakain ko lang siya ng pizza. Kung nandito siya sa Manila. But, uh, I enjoyed it a lot, RD. <laughs> so I'm still learning from, from these people. And, and as I mentioned, the last tip really is to start, continue this journey of learning. Uh, it's nearing 11.30, uh, Sito and Nielsen. So I have another... Appointment. Nakala ko na 11 na tayo eh. So, gano'n ako 11.30. So, pati si Marvin, mag- magka-trade pa yan. Hahabunin pa niya yung 12 o'clock. Mag- magpapayaman mo niyo muna yan ng 30 minutes bago magsara ang market. Hindi naman. Y- yun yung maganda sa stocks. No? Habang nag-ano tayo, nag-altab lang ako eh. So, yeah. it's, ano, it's really something you can do anytime, anywhere. <laughs> yeah. Yan ang height talaga. Galing. Anyway, you know, anyway uh, RD, uh, Marvin, and Jess, Meron naman kayong mga nilagay na mga contact ano contact uh, emails or mga links sa ating chat. Yeah. Oo, so maybe they can uh, consult with you ano na lang later na lang. Basta ano lang namin yung disclaimer natin, uh, yung mga consultation niyo ngayon libre lahat yan. Afterwards, <laughs> bukas din na namin i-assure sa inyo yan. <laughs> Sabi nga ni RD, if you get into some problems, <laughs> that's your problem. <laughs> Pag-aralan nyo talaga. No? May disclaimer lang po. Pero okay lang. Message, message lang. Email. We'll be happy to uh, to answer your questions. 
Are your books available online? Yeah, dun sa um, rdroberto.com. I have a page there okay. called Books and then they can order online. E-books okay. or print books. So, thank you. Siguro, we'll give uh, Nils, Nils uh, some last words for RD, uh, Marvin, and Jess before they, uh, no, they exit. Uh, 